Hello, Dr. Aisha Umar, a political scientist from Woods University. Uh, Dr. Umar, thanks for joining us. Now I understand your background in English studies really is in political science, the theory of things. How is this particular situation we see in the ANC conference going to play out on the national stage? We're seeing quite a shift in the ANC's place in our national politics. Thank you, firstly, Varashni, for having me and for uh, sort of conducting this interview. Um, I think there's two things to bear in mind. The first is um, around kind of the shifts in power safety within the internal dynamics of the ANC, which is a quite a fascinating thing thing that we're trying to follow theoretically. So there's this kind of tension between centrist and uh, left politics. Whether whether that is really occurring in, in practice is something that's that's debated quite a lot. But but there's this idea that you have one candidate like Ramaphosa who uh, symbolizes a kind of more centrist, business friendly, market style politics, and somebody like of course Azana Lamini Zuma, who on the other hand um, represents um, I mean aside from her sort of very positive role as a as a as a Gender, um, you know, representing a kind of more left orientated politics and being a, um, you know, a proponent of this rhetoric around a radical economic transformation. Um, so I think how that's going to play out on the, on the national stage is going to be very interesting given the outcome of today's election. And um, would that, uh, coming from the university sector, um, that announcement around free higher education, which was very timely, uh, by, uh, that was announced by, by President Jacob Zuma, whether that's just another populist type of ploy um, to kind of sort of entrench this view that somebody like Mkosa Zana, uh, him endorsing her, etc., will, will carry out these more, um, you know, policies which are called poor and in favor of the working class is yet to be seen. But, but there's a lot in the background that I think that, that we can kind of perceive and, and try and locate within the, the broader theoretical narrative. Going forward, okay, so, um, you know, coming out of today, I think that going to win or going to win. But going forward, regardless of who wins, how is the ANC being perceived in our society today? You know, Varashni, that's a, I think that's a really important question. Um, I think the one uh, the one aspect which I found quite fascinating yesterday was a lack of generational diversity, yes. and I think a lot of people have been talking about that. That um, you know, again, I you know I can reflect back on my experiences with working with a lot of uh, stud um, students in the in the student structures at the universities who talk about the fact that the ANC for them to a large extent uh, re represents a kind of a party for older people from um, you know from the old comrade liberation struggle. Many of them. Who, which it doesn't really kind of resonate with the, with the current moment. And so there's that aspect, you know, are they going to be able to integrate into the new NEC um, enough young people to, to articulate the generational diversity that's needed to, to carry them forward into 2019? Which opposition parties are doing really well? And, and, and somebody, a party like the EFF, which is doing incredibly well. I mean, if I look at just um, a, um, like where I used to lecture at UJ at the Soweto campus, um, you know, the, the kind of young people that are slowly moving into, um, into the ranks of the EFF because they seem to have this kind of firebrand leadership, energy. this energy yes. um, around questions on land, etc., around uh, black consciousness, mm -hmm. and many things which, which resonate with, with, with the younger, with the youth vote. And of course, the youth vote is very important for 2019. I think that today's election, again, to answer the second part of the question, will be quite important um, insofar as. Um, who is elected in consolidating power and giving the image of is this going to be a renewal of old values um, of the old regime with, with Jacob Zuma or is this going to be an ex you know a kind of a change so to speak with with Cyril coming in and kind of trying to clean up a lot of the mess mm. that the ANC has seen in South Korea. So um, you know it's it's hard to say how the ordinary voter on the on the ground is going to and, and this is something that we, we're going to we're going to be able to only really foresee in time, but but. But I think um, because there has been so much of, you know, and the way in which the ANC was punished in the, in the local government elections, um, there has been so much of disillusionment with the party as a whole. I think, at least from my view, my assessment, and of course the Zana and Amini Zuma, um, you know, outcome to, to many is going to represent um, a kind of just an extension of the old system. And, um, and I don't think that that, that is going to have pernicious outcome. Absolutely. Yes, well, Dr. Omar, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much.